You guys, I think this might be the best vitamin C serum that I've ever tried. Have you ever fallen in love at first sight? Because with this recipe, we fell in love at first bite. If you have curly hair, I'm going to change your life. Do it and don't do it. I think I found the puffer of the season. If you want healthy hair and to smell delicious, y'all need this. Summer natural lowy skin. Here's the secret. Guys, this, this is urgent. Welcome back. We've been going inside the world of social media influencers this hour. Those are just a few over 50 million influencers out there right now. Joining us now, two guests with an inside view to explain more on how it all works. Dr. Corey Emanuel is a psychologist who specializes in examining the influence of the media. He also helps brands with their digital marketing. And award-winning YouTuber Amy Landino is a podcaster and author of the book, Vlog Like a Boss. She helps brands and influencers gain digital attention. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Tisa. Um, Dr. Corey, I'll have to admit, I will go and I'll scroll, and the minute someone's like, this is delicious, you should make it, I'm in. And then an hour later, I'm looking at 500 different cooking videos, but not cooking anything. Smart. But I'm mesmerized. <laughs> what is it doing to our brains when we're scrolling like that? Well, the dopamine, for sure, is at play. You know, and I think about dopamine, like when you take that bite of that delicious piece of cake, or the pleasure you might derive from an intimate partner. So you're saying the stimulation <laughs> of sex is like the same feeling when you are scrolling? Absolutely. That That's caught full. your attention. <laughs> yeah. Amy, you know, if this is all very strategic, even though those videos look like they're spontaneous, mm -hmm. this is curated content mm -hmm. designed to lure us in. Yeah. When you're working with a brand, is that what the brand is looking at? When a brand is uh, thinking about what kind of content they want to put in front of you, it's all about relatability. And so that's what the algorithm is helping with, is generating what you want to see. The dopamine that we're talking about is to make you happy every time you open the app. So when a brand wants to work with an influencer so that there's greater exposure for a product through that content, it comes down to who do they talk to, how do they continue to make their audience happy, and how can they make their product relevant in that conversation. I'm curious because I'm old enough to remember when there were stories about the grocery store sending subliminal messages where the grocery store was structured to make you want to buy more. Yes. That's the same thing with social media. I love how you put that because that is the analogy. You think about what's at eye level for yeah. someone at the grocery store. That's kind of what the algorithm is doing. For but you. your phone is so at the eye level in the grocery store could be one, but your phone is always eye That's level. That's right. So everything is everything. eye level. And as often as we use it, we continue to teach it what we want to see because the platforms are just saying, well, we pretty much know what you like based on the activity that you have generated. And so we're just trying to continue to make you happy. Mm -hmm. Even if we're doing things that don't actually make us happy, they just keep happening because we're in a habit loop. What does it do uh, psychologically um, to us that makes us want to not just watch but buy? So there is an emotional bond that often forms when we identify with a brand, when we identify with an influencer, yeah. right? And it can be sort of this illusionary bond, right? I, I might not have a relationship with the influencer, but there's perceived credibility at play, yeah. the way they situate themselves as an authority. There is some similarity comparison happening, maybe your attitudes, your beliefs. Yeah. I can relate to it in a, in a unique way. So they make way. them instant friends. Absolutely. Amy, I do want to ask you, Instagram changed their algorithm earlier this year. They said to favor video content. Kardashians complained about it, Cardi mm -hmm. B. Basically, they didn't want us to post pictures anymore. They wanted these reels. And Instagram then later said that they would regroup and not prioritize that. Why did that hit a nerve? Because I heard people everywhere saying, my likes are down, what's happening? And they're all complaining about that and measuring themselves by the light. Well, it's really funny because if you asked Instagram, they probably wouldn't admit to them not wanting you to post photos yeah, anymore. Yeah. They're just trying to, again, say, no, no, this is what you guys like. We're just trying to make it better for you. They're clearly looking at their competitors. They're seeing where the attention is gravitating. When you think about the different platforms that are heavy hitters in video in particular. Because yeah, video is where it's at now. It used to be at. post a picture, everyone liked your cute picture. Now, it's all about the video. When you think about sustaining the internet and attention, it's all based on advertising. How do you keep advertising attention there? Video does that really well. What do you think the next um, 
the next direction of social media as we become more consumed with it? Well, I think it's really that we're all becoming influencers. Yeah. It, you know, we heard from the micro influencers, you don't have to have a million followers. And we've got people with 400 times that on TikTok. Mm -hmm you don't have to have that many followers to make an impression and recommend something to your community. As a matter of fact, it's more impactful when it is more intimate. It's like so a sci-fi movie. We're all an ad. We're all a walking yeah. advertise. It was a brilliant conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. Amy Landino, Dr. Corey Emanuel. Amy, your book is phenomenal.